Okay, just before we get started with this, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Oh, this has been a month's wild, wild world of work for me, but it's really... Uh, I just want to thank the person that actually inspired this was Mr. Bones 40 k also known as Arthur. And I want to thank all the people that attended, especially my friends who were willing to be forced to attend, such as Dadle Bun Boy, Kono the Snow Wolf, and Kono Branded. They're all wonderful people, and I hope you give every single one of them a check out. Anyway, thank you all so much, and I hope you enjoy the video as I force them to learn about 40k! Hello, everyone! Kono? Uh -huh. There he is. Yes, the Commissar has dragged Kono in here. Uh -huh. I think he also gagged him. Nom. No. Uh. I was just eating. I'll have to give him a pay doc for that. Huh? Oh, I'll have to reprimand him, of course. Ah, hell. <laughs> anyway, we are waiting for the commissar to properly drag in two more people. Oh. Then we will begin our sonar of these not learning, not knowing any imperial truths. Whatever you have in store. Let's see. Do not worry. You'll learn the proper truth about the Imperium of Man and all sure. things involving 40k. I mean, if I really want to be bad, I could throw you to the Dark Angels and say, hey, this guy knows about the Fallen. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just say you would uh, uh, not have a happy death. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, that was before they would interrogate you. Well, Asmodine would interrogate you, and you would, uh... He's really good at what he does. He's been all for him. Yes, members of the Dark Angels chat. Hello, everyone. Yes, it is I. Your local Kamazar. True servant of the Emperor. We are waiting for the <clears throat> for the troops to drag in two more proper heretics, which we will then in exchange into the Inquisition. I've been here for the last half hour. Why? Anyway, we are still waiting on two more fools to be dragged into the proper ways. And I think you guys are all going to learn something you like about this here. Good Mike, because I could. I mean, honestly, I'm just here for the ride. I mean, you were dragged in here, so you didn't really have a choice. <laughs> True. <laughs> but I didn't really fight against it. Well, yeah. Then I would have called the Inquisition. And then they take you away, and then I'm not sure what would happen to you. Actually, they might have just shot you. Maybe. Or exterminate us your whole planet. Do we technically... Aren't we on the same planet? Wouldn't I mean, that technically... I'm, I mean, I... The, us, thing, the, oh. the difference is I have a spaceship and you don't. <laughs> True. <laughs> but yeah, exterminate us is basically get, glassing the planet. Christian here speaking truths. But yes, it took some time for me to make this presentation. We will only be going to, uh, from the start to the Horus Heresy. Which, Kono has no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Nope. Not I did even not a slice. single clue what you just said. Serious. No. Hentai orcs and elves, no. That's, that's not how orcs even work here. One thing uh, we'll be going over soon once Chrono gets here. That way I can at least have two fools to uh, discipline properly. 
about the hero of the Imperium, Kyphus Kane? Kai? Ah, yes. Only to the heresy. Yes, we deal with the mutant, the heretic, and the non but Well, actually, that's the same thing as a heretic. The non-believer. <laughs> oh, wow. There's only one. Seriously, though, I only know nothing about 4K. Well, then you're about to learn quite a bit. It is not a fun place to yeah, live, I will say that. You're not... You don't have to be shut down for some, at least. And, yeah. I've been working about on this for about a month, so, yeah. This will eventually go over on YouTube. It'll be insane. Well, Dato at least knows some of the information because I leaked him a bit some just in case he forgot again. But yeah, you're going to all find a faction that you might like. I do hope it becomes successful too. I hope this becomes a springboard for you. If it not, then uh, oh well, I just hope it gets enough to get me by. I'm not the biggest 40k guy. I am casual at the very least, which makes me putting this together... A daunting task in itself. But yes. Everyone knows we're speaking high gothic right now. Kono is even more lost. You just see the spider. That one meme of a bunch of equations appearing above his head. <laughs> wow. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Gothic is just the language that all humans speak. Hi, Gothic. It, it's literally just English. That, that's a freebie. Because let's be honest. I'm never going to bring that up. As for all of you, I will not be going in too far into the workings of the Imperium. Considering how big this universe is, I will touch on the Imperium and what's going on through the history, but I will not go in their workings, at least not in this one. But hey, if the people over on YouTube like it well enough, I might just, uh, do another. There's high gothic and low gothic. There's also different mutant versions of humans. Yeah, but yeah. 40k is a very interesting series in that I feel like... It does get a lot of some of the stuff it deserves. Like, it's a very silly series sometimes. Such as the saying of the series. Do you know the, the saying of the series? No. In, like, in the 42nd millennia, there is only war. Man, that's deep. While it is grimdark, there is always heroes or light in the set, in the setting. All I'll say is, I think everyone will find a race they could play, but when everyone gets her, I will tell them not to play the tabletop because it's too expensive. The tabletop? There's a tabletop? Dude, we are just going to get into it. And sweetie, I have a faction that I think you'll like too. I picked this ones because I like them, but also because I think she'll like them too. Isn't that sweet? Yes. We're going to talk about, well, well, anyone who knows about uh, 40k will know the biggest space me marine around. But he's near the end. He's on his way home, but I hope he makes it okay. I hope he doesn't get into a car crash. Anyway. And. But yes, as you can see, I am clearly seeing next to a mutant of the human race. Okay, hold on. I mean, you're not wrong, but... Listen, they are, they are a bunch of different types of humans. Or... Er, if I really want to get into it, we'll go. We'll, I'll touch on one of the races that I think you'll like. They're well, they're not a race; they're a mutant form of human. 
Oh god, Deedle just woke up. Well, have the Commissar drag him here. You'll all be learning about 40k, all of you. As for why I have very soft music in the background, it's to help keep me calm, so that I don't go crazy over this. Funny enough, one night, I literally, when I was finally done, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make another slide. I actually, at one point, I had to stop myself going over all the Primarchs. I had to cut myself down to not do every single one, because there's a lot of them. You don't know what I'm talking about either. You don't know nope. who those are. Anyway, once we get to that point, we'll learn about all different things. And if this goes well enough, uh, maybe we'll do it again, where I teach them about the Imperium of Man. Oh, Kars is going to have fun learning about the demons. The Imperium of Man is gigantic. And all the different forms and all the different people working in it. What the hell are those emotes? Well, Daedal is eventually being dragged here by the Commissar along with Chrono. Eventually. They will be interrogated after the seminar. And probed for heretical thoughts. Hey, whoa. Oh, what do you mean, probe? You just mean interrogated, right? Oh, yeah, you'll be... Sta well, I'm... Well, I really don't question the Inquisitor each time he comes by, because that usually will mean I might get in trouble, so I don't want to get in trouble. You guys can get in trouble. Saving your own skin. What a guy. When you're dealing with the Inquisition, that's all you can do. <laughs> Truly. I don't know why you can't run away from the Inquisition. You can't run. No one expects the. Then I just might. Thanks, them. Watch me. Funny, Chrono. They have a special unit dedicated to dealing with demons, which I won't talk about, but yeah, they do just that. So, you're not a. Yeah. Oh dear. Hmm. Okay, now Daedal is telling me what his dream was. <laughs> nah. After I shouted heresy in the Discord. Heresy. But yeah, they do. The best way to describe I can the Inquisition is a necessary evil. I post the children and the... Ah, oh, your dragon children. Funny enough. Actually, now I think about it, there might be a few factions in here you like. But unfortunately, I won't go too much into Malkior the Sigilite. Aww. I kind of wish I had more <laughs> Wait, she got the green one for someone? Well, the problem, uh, you, you really don't know anything about the Inquisition, do you, Karst? Oh, what the fuck? Boy. Well, I know you do, sweet. I love their design, too. It makes me think of you, because they look cuddly. Anyway, all my girlfriend is dealing with that. Hmm. Oh. Anyway, I was messing with Dale. I'm not sure if he's like. Hmm. Uh, 
I don't know. That uh, what? Oh my god! And a friend keeps posting about his stream. Anyway, I've been playing this song forever, dear lord. Anyway. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Ultramarines. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to, but I'm not going to like it. I don't know. A lot of names. Oh, you'll learn all of them. They will be compressed into your mind. Yeah. Also, if you're an editor, cut out most of the starting part. That way it doesn't uh, drag on. Okay. Back to the game. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll, uh... I know, you love your fox dragons. They're very, very flo floofy and cute, just like you. I wonder if there's a fox dragon VTuber. Probably. Anyway. There is actually a comedy series for 40k. Because it can be very memeable with some of the stuff that happens in it. And I have actually been practicing... Way too... I know, I know. Well, technically ours, but... Hmm. But yeah, I actually did, in the early morning today, I had a bit of vocal warm-ups because I was practicing talking like this for a bit. It's different from streaming because you're actually presenting something. Anyway, while well, we're waiting on those two, let's see, do you know actually anything about 40k? I mean, I heard about the orcs. Oh, That's it. That's it? That's it. I know about the orcs and their whole little belief system, and I find oh. that really funny. Well, 74, goddamn, sweetie. Yes, their belief system. Technically, they have a belief system, but you know. Anyway, I will set it up now. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. I'm gonna <clears throat> presume <clears throat> all these little symbols are factions. Yes. It's not 100. It, it doesn't need to be 100, sweet. Anyway. I can't tell if Dale's actually mad because I'm pretty sure he should know that if I say heresy that I'm not actually being serious. 
I hope he doesn't take it seriously. You may never know. What? <laughs> what do you mean? You need a hundred dragons? Anyway. I guess I should get to this part. Yes. Warhammer 40k. By me. Mickwolf. And as you can clearly see some of these symbols. Yes, each one of these are technically factions, but some of them are factions within factions. Yes. I've worked day and night on this for about a month. Yeah. To say that I've uh, worked too hard on it would be an understatement. The amount of research I did just to get to know certain characters, just looking over and over through places and trying to like cross-reference some stuff. But I can at least show this screen. God damn it, one of my friends keeps te texting me. He keeps telling me about Elden Ring right now. I don't need to know about Elden Ring. Uh, isn't there a DLC for that? It's, it, there's a DLC coming out for it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. As you can clearly see, I'm standing on the heretic's head. Oi. You will be my chair for the time. Void, quit telling me about Elden Ring. They just keep texting about Elden Ring. Hello, Ro Hello, Dadle. Hey, I'm here. Oh, do you have the thingy? I see the commissar has dragged in Dadle. Are you okay? Yeah, I did. I really just told you I almost laughed. Yeah, but you never know. That could be problems. Ads, I see. But Dadle, do you have the thingy? Do? Back. Uh, what? You know, the reactive... Oh, yeah, 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 okay. We have brought another. The Commissar has dragged in a bunny man. Another mutant of the human race. Now, uh, I'm sorry that does not work here, Petra. As I have been promoted to Inquisitor. Drag him away. Wait. Oh my god, how do I... Uh, spooky, spooky tech. Yeah. How do I yeah. pick up a free tech? It, it, well, we rarely, you rarely ever change it, so. I changed it a couple of times. That's the thing. I changed it because okay, yeah. I haven't changed it in a while. Okay, yeah. I need to check something. Uh. Okay, that shouldn't be there. But yeah. For though, for, uh, if I make this part, uh, to this part, uh, editor cut at this part. I'll say that right now at uh, whatever time it has been. Thank you for Thank the follow, you. Sir Pivotin the Fourth. Okay, there shouldn't be two alert boxes. What the? F it just looks like two of me in a row just showing up. Either way, we have begun. Okay, so I can start this off. Oh, I. Can once Dadle is fully tied up by the Commissar. Dude, I literally... Dude, you literally called me to it. I'm not even... You just Dadle, we're to doing a up. bit. I tie myself up. Dadle, we're doing a bit. Okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, oh no! Look, I am getting uh, uh, tied, tied, tied up. Oh my, yeah, yeah. Those, totally, those acting totally lessons really aren't up, paying myself. off. Totally not uh, just tied up myself. Oh, let me get my popcorn. Totally not just uh, tied up myself. So anyway, because next I'm wanting to do this for a while and well, it's less I I've been to... wanting to do this and the fact that I kind of did it and why I've been showing it off because all my hard work. Anyway. Yep. Oh, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Let me just get this fast. So where's well, the commissar let, when you need let, them? Let me make a stock. Okay. 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 Wait, just right oh, fuck. I pressed I the wrong to... button. God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. 
is starting out scuffed, all right. Okay. Chrono will be dragged in by the Commissar any moment now. And when he is... But yes. I can start out telling you guys about 40k a bit now. Okay, to Wait, start off... Wait, you can start the... Start... Wait, you yeah, need yeah, a what? I have to start the lie on my stream because I forgot I was going to stream this as well. Commissar, this man needs to be relieved of his thoughts, of his heretical thoughts. Fine. Ready for him. Ah, anyway. Learning about. Where's my bolter? I don't know. Hello, dead. Okay, for some reason the music isn't going off. Where isn't the music? Oh. Okay. It's just gonna be a just chatty stream. Okay, everyone. Oh, we'll eventually have to learn about Slanish. I'm not looking forward to it. No one should be looking forward to it. And. Okay. We are live! Everyone ready? Okay, yeah. Okay, so here's the start out point. The Commissar will eventually drag in Chrono, but he'll eventually get here. I forgot to For the very the beginning, effect. I need to yeah. explain how 40k came to be. Before there was Warhammer 40k, there was Warhammer Fantasy. Which is a somewhat very different thing. Like, originally they just said, Okay, what if we put all these races, but in space... Oh, everyone, I need to get my uh, flea tech started. I forgot to do it. And also, hi, I'm sorry for, like, if I'm kind of, like, just out of it. I literally just woke up. And also, I had a really good dream. I literally had a dream that I met this nurse at, like, a hospital. And we hit it off. So, she was really cute. And I really Thomas. hope that's a natural, like, thing that actually happens to me. Mm, Commissar, I think this man might be co being... Coerced by chaos. <clears throat> anyway, you get what I'm saying. They can no, still infect you your said, dreams. Okay, there we go. Hello, hi. I am uh, tied up, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> totally didn't tie up myself. But anyway, so hi. I am going to learn about okay. Warhammer. Uh, yes, some you Warhammer are. Stuff. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. Well, he will have to give Dale to the Inquisitor to check to see if he has been corrupted by chaos. Anyway, no, as I, I was saying before, you don't know that. We don't know that. Anyway, as I said before, war before there was Warhammer 40k, there was Warhammer Fantasy. Which, the two are now completely incompatible. Like, originally they just put all their races into... Oh, fucking, fucking... Like putting all eggs into one basket? No, oh, no, 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 oh, no. Yep. Basically, they originally... Ah, that's a bad part on me. They originally just basically put all the races into space. Like, and they just changed a few names. Like, for instance, the dwarves in space just became the squats. <laughs> what? Well, uh, but, but now they they're... Now, basically, Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy are completely different. They are not compatible in the slice with some slight things that you can, like the orcs are basically kind of the same. But other than that, they're basically not the same at all. Okay, so like... Uh, it doesn't also they help... Similar, but completely yeah, they... different. Well, here's... Warhammer Fantasy takes place in like... I want to say the Gunpowder Age... It's very different. Okay. And unlike Warhammer 40k, which is a spanning, gigantic area, this Warhammer Fantasy is just one planet. With all these different races. Mm. And yeah. So yeah, that's basically the beginning. Now, at the very beginning of Warhammer, uh -uh. there was... Yeah. The biggest bang we ever knew. You know, the big bang. The biggest one. The biggest of all. Yo, Obama. No. Commissar, slap Yahoo! him. 
Now, the first two beings that came into being were these, I want to say gaseous beings that mostly all they did is uh, hang around stars and eat the energy off of them, for the most part. As you do, as you, you like do. Drugs. Uh, no, those, that's the other one. They actually look like toads. Those are the old ones. We know basically nothing about them except they look like giant toad men. And that they were incredibly powerful psychers. Which, I need to describe what a psyker is. It's basically space magic. Ah. It's basically using the power of the immaterium and bringing it to the forefront. Yes, Hypno Toad. And we don't actually have any pictures of the old ones, so I'm basically paraphrasing. And these are actually the Slan who lead the Lizard Man in Warhammer Fantasy. But yeah. The old ones were super evolved toad men who actually went around basically creating other races. Like, they could have possibly had a hand in creating humanity. We're actually not sure. And Kono Stone on his way. But yeah. Huh? So basically the first super intelligent race in this entire I series is like giant toad men. Yeah, they basically created a lot of things. They created the webway, which basically think of it as an interdimensional highway. So they could get to places in a matter of minutes instead of having to use warp travel, which is a lot more dangerous. Yes, and they created the Eldar, the Corks, who were the predecessor of the Orcs. The Eldar, well, they're basically space elves. But yeah, they could control large parts of the Immaterium, which is... The Immaterium, I should describe it right now, is the realm of thought, dream, and... Uh, how should I put this? Feeling. Like, you know the saying, everyone has their own demons? Mm -hmm. Well, if enough people believe in that demon, it will manifest in the Immaterium. So Immaterium, or it's literally just... Like hey, I said, you the realm. It, it may happen. The like I said, the realm of thought. And psychers can tap into this realm. God damn it! Why did it do that? Now we're getting to a bit more sketchy things. The necrotas. They... Yeah, Maybe the necrotinier. The necrotinier were basically uh, skeletal-looking men. Uh, basically, the big problem they had was they landed on... The old ones created them on a really, really terrible planet. Their atmosphere wasn't great. They were near a radioactive star. They wouldn't live up to, like, 30 at most. So... Uh, that's just cavemen talk. They literally... Yeah, doesn't sound nice at all. That yeah. Really like their lives were mostly about building there. giant tombs for themselves because they were mostly about... They're mostly about dying. They uh, basically were draw a shitty hand and were basically ad advanced really fast in their technology just to get the hell off their planet. Just to get off of there. And they were pissed because they felt like they were given an unfair shake compared to all the other races. So what That's did they do? Really cool. Yeah. So what did they do? They decided to go the to war. war Basically, the, necro the Necrotus would, uh, they eventually grew to a galactic empire at the time. They controlled different planets, but they were pissed at the old ones for not giving them their secrets of immortality, not really helping them, and, you know, creating them on basically a horrible planet. Now, right now, they were actually embro embroiled in a civil war, <laughs> so to unite them all together... The Silent King, which is basically the leader of all of the Necrotus, he decides, we need a common enemy. Well, we all hate the old ones. Let's go to war with the old ones. This was the worst idea they could have possibly made. If you remember, the old I ones mean, were you, massively... Oh my god. What is going to happen? They but basically... Yeah, well. It was terrible for them. They were getting torn to pieces and just pushed back, basically back to their own planet. Because they could not 
hold out against them. Basically, think about it like this. Think about uh, suddenly you have a fleet. Then a giant t group of toadmen suddenly appear out of nowhere right in between your fleet using the webway and immediately psychically charge, killing off the brains of most of your fleet commanders. And then they leave through the same way they came in. Basically, they were so they were looking for anything that would give them an edge. So what did they find? Well, do you remember those Catan. space, the Catan? Do you remember the? the Kamazar, slap him. Ow. This is Catan. Look. It's I'm no. Let me explain. Do you remember those energy gaseous beings that I talked about earlier? The Toadmen? No, the other beings that were beside the Toadmen. Those gaseous beings that ate only off stars. Yeah. Well, guess who found them? Oh. Basically, they were... Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, these guys were found by the Necrotus, and... See, the Necrotus actually had an interesting piece of technology that was basically living metal. Basically, think of it as like, a, I guess the best way to describe it is a symbiote, like from Spider-Man, you know, kind of like that, where it's a growing metal, a growing living metal. Symbiotes are like, and basically, they're not really metal. And basically, yeah, but here's the thing. These actually were made of metal. They had this living metal that they would make their stuff out of. Basically, what they did when they found these beings is they decided, what if we give these gaseous beings super intelligent bodies? As you that do. That like a horrible idea. On the regular Tuesday night. They were looking for anything for an edge. So yeah, they named these the Catan, which is in their language means star god. <laughs> Basically, really? but here's the thing. You're basically giving an all-powerful creature suddenly intelligence with none of the feeling to it. <clears throat> Not the sponge. So, yeah, the Catan, when they got these new bodies, they suddenly had a new hunger. Not just for star energy. Their new hunger was for souls. Yummy, yummy souls. And the Catan that discussed their new alliance with the Necrotus was known as the Deceiver. These are all what the Catan look like, by the way. All these different pictures. I could take them. I could kill them. They, they can summon a black hole into a solar system like that. Easy clap, easy clap. I can kill them. I can take them. This could be two days prep time. And this is where the Necrotus become the Necrons. The Deceiver tells the Necrons that he and the other Catan, well, well, originally we went to war with the Old Ones and we were actually looking for allies, but we were shunned away and defeated by them originally. And here's what we're going to do for you. Since you're our allies, of course, we're going to give you the immortality you so desperately crave. They say they have to eat their stolen bodies. Yeah, the undead, yes. Funny enough, originally these guys were more like just Terminators, but now they have more of an Egyptian theme going on, and I really love it. Like, the normal... Uh, the normal Necrons aren't really my thing, but when you, when you go higher up and reach into Pharaoh, yeah, some of their designs really start to pop off that I really like. I don't like the normal Necrons as you're seeing down below there. Wait, hold on. What do I know this song? Maybe. Do I know this song? I don't I know. The middle looks alright. Yeah, the one right there. But basically, here's but what know happened. You know, you know what happened. The Silent King agreed, saying <laughs> to the Deceiver's <laughs> want. My God, you do know this song. Anyway, the Deceiver agreed to this. He basically said, "Okay." The Silent King basically agreed to the Seaver's idea, and what they did was basically they ate their souls and their bodies and replaced no, their not. bodies with the living metal. And so, they ne the Necrons, as they were known now, were basically beings of just living bone. 
were just living metal now. That's all they were. They were now servants of the Catan. That's all they were now. They, for some reason, still had consciousness. Like, still had a mind of their own. Somewhat. Which isn't really explained. I misspelled Necrons on this side. Don't set, don't focus on that. Also, I can hear that music in the background, Daedal. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, telling you. I Okay, Ryan? Okay. Anyway, here's the thing. Now we're moving on to the next part of what happened to them. They were basically enslaved by them. Okay, War in Heaven Part 2. This is important to know. So, basically, with the Catan now on their side... Things turned a lot bad, because you remember, basically, Psyker power is the power of the soul. So, guess who got a big hungry buffet? Thank you for the hundred bits. So, gu guess who got a big hungry buffet of new races? The Gatan did. So, yeah, they would just start eating up these younger races and the old ones. Just tearing through them, and you couldn't really stop them. It would just start, like, summoning black holes, tearing through them like nothing, along with the Necrons. Because the Necrons had found a way to enter space just like the Webway, but different in their own way. Which, okay, uh, basically, what the Necrons do with their new weapons is they... The, the thing. Achievement. I finished. Uh, Dado? What? Sorry. Uh, oh, if you're gonna talk to uh, the person, could you mute for a second, please? I did. Oh. No, no, you didn't. Oh, oh, I did. My, not my Discord. It's, sorry. It's fine, it's fine. Anyway, as I said before, the younger races were having a really hard time against this because you know what necro, uh, Necron weapons do? They atomize no, you. They kill you. No, That's they, what they do. They atomize you and just suck up your soul. So they kill uh -oh. you. Yeah, exactly. It's no. the same day. It's a... No, Dale, it's you don't realize there's a difference in the 4K universe to soul death. It's the method of the death, my guy. Anyway, moving on to the part. This is the part okay. where this was gets interesting. Basically, the Gatan with the Deceiver... The Deceiver actually tricks his brothers at this point. Because they start realizing they're going to win. But then they realize if they win... They don't get any more souls to suck up. <laughs> so they actually start attacking each other. And trying to feed off each other. Which is insane if you think about it for more than a minute. Because they were actually winning. It's like, Question. hey, we're going to start winning this fight. Yeah, but we won't gain Question. anything. Question. Yeah. Do you think that really is because the Deceiver just really likes... The Deceiver was doing this to get to his own ends because he helped lead uh, a group of Necrons against the Catan. And basically, the uh, Necrons actually built a giant cannon in secret and just waited for them, waited for the Catan to be at their weakest point. And uh, basically do you hit think them. That the Deceiver just really likes war, so he decided to change. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. We're not going there. We're never going there. Actually, we might have to go there at some point. Shit. We might have to. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, what happened with this new giant cannon that the Silent King made was basically he sh would shoot as a Catan and actually split them to pieces. Like, their body would be... Basically, their very being would be torn into these shards or called Catan shards. Basically, they would no longer be nearly as strong and they would be controllable by the Necrons. Thank you for the hydrate, I'm gonna need it. <laughs> Seriously, think about it. Like, 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 they always eat each other. And... Anyway. <laughs> and now we go to the Great Sleep. Now, the Great Sleep is when the Necrons, they realized they were at their tail end of things. They realized that their age was over because the other races had already fought back now that this whole civil war between the Catan had done. They have actually found ways to basically get around some of the Gatan's abilities. And basically were fighting back quite well. But the thing was, most of the, the old ones were dead. And the Necrons knew that their time was pretty much over. E. E. Great sleep. So basically, huh. 
So basically what they did was they entombed themselves underground in worlds called tomb worlds, where basically they went underground quite literally. Hmm. They would quite literally just see and wait for the sediment to cover up their worlds. So mummification. But basically, like... sometimes in the current day, age of 40k, a human world would just be revealed that they find something and they realize that they're actually on a tomb world. And they accidentally oh. woke up the Necrons. Imagine how that must feel just being like, oh, well, shoot, it's the Necrons. We gotta leave. Basically, these guys are like undying Terminators. They don't care if you take out an arm or a leg. They will keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you because they hate that you exist. Hell, there's some Necrons that have uh, gone crazy and started wearing flesh. I'm not going to talk about those ones. One, because I don't have enough information about them. Two, because they kind of scare me. Fair. Anyway, the aftermath. What was basically the aftermath? The Sea of Souls, which was basically the Immaterium, was transformed into a realm of chaos because of this gigantic war. You gotta remember, it is a realm of thought, sorry, dream, sorry, I keep on and... Sorry, and I'm muting. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. It's a realm of thought, dream, and souls. Uh, basically, oh. that means all this crap happening, you know, these people dying, all this horrible shit happening all at once, it's having a really bad effect on the Immaterium. Like, an incredibly bad effect. Like, it is warping it into a realm of pure chaos. The Eldar were basically the masters of the galaxy at this point. As you do, as one would be. They had all the Old Ones technology, plus their own. They were incredibly powerful psychers. And basically, they ran the galaxy. No one could match them at all at this point in time. They had the webway. They could get anywhere they wanted in the galaxy. And no one could stop them. And they were the most numerous race in the galaxy at this point. And they had their own pantheon of gods, so if one of them died, they were fine. You, there were some points huh. in the... There's some points in 40k where they could literally just pull souls out of the immaterium and just give them a new body. That's what the Eldar could do. And yeah, the Necrons had eventually just hidden away and only awakened now in the 41st millennia because the Imperium of Man kind of finds them every once in a while. Yeah. Basically, for Eldar, they could just put the souls into something called Wraith Constructs, which is basically like putting a soul in a mecha body. Which basically think of... That's basically like unlimited soldiers for you. Now we're finally to Earth. Or as it's known as in this series, Terra. And the that Age of... Like that's the original Terra. Latin name. That's the original Latin name of Earth. It just means Earth in a different language. And the Age of Progress. I mean, I also just think of Terraria. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, basically at this point, humanity had just progressed pretty far. We were really unconnected to this entire war because one, it was spanning way longer than our existence. Like, way longer. Humanity advanced to the point where we were slowly able to terraform other planets in the solar system. And we had gained what the ability was of the warp drive, which basically means you go through the Immaterium to get to a new area simultaneously, instead of going faster than light. If you get my meaning. It's like, you know, it was like in Star Wars, the hyperspace, but a, quite a bit different. I'll explain later. And yes, there was a mass exodus overall to different planets. From uh, Holy Terra. It's not called Holy Terra. Now we get to the Dark Age of Technology. Many main problems with the colonies that were basically created. You know, hostile alien forces that didn't really like their planet being colonized. The predator creatures of the world. The rise of the men of iron. <laughs> 
Uh, the Men of Iron. Basically, if you don't know what a Men of Iron is, it's basically just robots rebelling. Basically, originally we just had a bunch of robots to do all okay, the work okay, and fight for us. Okay, okay, sorry. I wasn't paying attention to the last couple of slides. But now I'm ready to pay attention. Okay, so basically humanity can terraform plants now. We can travel through the Immaterium to basically warp travel. And there's a mass ex exodus for us. Okay, so the next part is this. There was sometimes uprisings of men of iron who are... The men of iron are basically just robots with AI that were originally made the to do work. The Yes. No, not... No. What? No. Not even close. But, but, you, but you said robot. You said, the Adeptus Mechanicus aren't iron. robots. It's okay, they're cyborgs, but they're No, no, no. The Deptus Mechanicus are very, very different to the Men of Iron. The Men of Iron were literally at a, basically a revolution against humanity at some point. And human stikers started to appear. Yay! Basically, you know, human space wizards. But basically, think of it like this. <laughs> wizards. Uh, um, basically think of a space wizard that doesn't know what they're doing and think about how terrifying that can be. As long as they're having fun, that's all that matters. No, and you're about to see why. And yeah, we had yeah, the, we they invented the warp that. drive to travel faster than light. Anyway, what was it, Kono? I know, I was gonna say, like, but actually, it's not actually gonna go the way that you think it will. No, it doesn't. Hurts. Anyway, continuing on. The Age of Strife. Yeah, the Men of Iron led a great rebellion. Humanity eventually won, but with great many losses. Human Psychers have this problem where if they... An untrained Human Psyker... Uh, basically what happens is... Uh, since demons are now starting to form in the realm of uh, the Sea of Souls... Uh, basically, anytime they... An untrained psyker uses their abilities. It basically draws demons to them, like a moth to a flame. As long as they're having fun, that's Fatal. all that matters. This would lead to the eradication of an entire planet. As long as it was fun, the psyker would be dead. Again, as long as they had fun, that's all that matters. So basically, no. the only humans that were planets that were able to survive this kind of would basically. Treat them like witches in the old times of ye old times. Basically, hunt them, the shit down, so and hunt. kill them before they could do anything. Because you gotta remember, if they do not do this, there's a good chance they all die. Also, yeah, this is a picture of demons, and this is a picture of a man of iron. <laughs> Now let's go back to the space elves. They were, let's look at where they were in the universe at this time. They were the masters of the galaxy, had the most advanced, had the most advanced technology with no equal, and had the best understanding of psychic powers and the webway. So, how did they fuck it up? How did they do tell? Share with the class. Well, to put it simply, they got complacent. And this is the part where I have to talk about the creation of Slanesh. Yeah, that's whoa. Yeah. The Elder got complacent with their power and just really fo focused on excess at some point. They basically, yeah, had massive orgies, massive blood orgies, and... Yeah. Oh. Remember, they... It doesn't they're... sound nice at all. No, it wasn't. It was all excess pleasure and grossness. They were told by the Eldars... They were all told no. by... No. Dadle? No. Dadle, I will explain how wrong you are in the next slide. Uh. It will actually... It's funny that you say that. They were warned by Eldar Seers, basically people that could somewhat see in the future, that uh, they shouldn't be doing this and they should try to go. But the problem was it was so ingrained 
and their culture at this point that they couldn't really do anything. There were some Eldar that left on, uh, that now live on craft worlds, which are basically giant moving worlds or giant moving ships just filled with them that were able to get away from this. And due to all this, I guess, sex and all this excess, the chaos god Slanesh, the god of excess and pleasure, was born. Huh. What happened next? Uh, Eldar, uh, Slanesh proceeded to eat 99% of the Eldar gods. Jesus. Oh. As soon as she was born. Oh, okay. Nope. Um, making, it so, and making it so that all, any Eldar that died would basically go to her and she would just eat up their souls. Ugh. The only ones that really survived was uh, Kegarak and Ish. Which, uh, what happened to her, we'll get into her. Uh, Kegarak is the Eldar laughing god of jesters, and he was actually able to escape. Hmm. He actually has a cult around him of jesters, and he's, uh, kind of does his own thing. But then she proceeded to go into the warp and awaken the other three chaos gods that had formed at this point. But y and also when she was born, hmm. she killed most of the Eldar race, like 90% of them, I want to say. Yeah, she do. Just so she could ride out and get those souls. Yeah, she do as a god. But yeah, her birth basically created a rip in reality, creating, basically connecting uh, reality to uh, the Immaterium, now called the Warp, called the Eye of Terror. But yeah. So, so, so I just created the Eye of Terror. Mm-hmm. It was really bad. Uh, uh, well, um, and the Eldar, the Eldar Empire basically no longer existed, and they were split into two to three groups. Basically, you know those Eldar that escaped? They became yeah. the Eldar that we know, that were focused on kind of monkish style of thinking, where they would focus on basically creating, you know, becoming better in one skill, and then moving on to a next until they mastered that skill, that kind of thing. Yes. The other became the Dark Eldar, who are just the worst. We'll get more into them, but the best way to describe the Dark Eldar is they still kind of keep doing that pleasure thing, but they learn that they were able to stave off uh, Slanesh's effects on them by uh, causing suffering to others. Hmm. By that I mean kidnapping other races. Oy, okay. just to Just to torture them. Oh, I can take it. I can take them. They don't. One of the well, things they do one, is re and one. D. They don't. One of the things they do is re and D castrate you. One on one. I, 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 I can handle it. No, I, you can't. Can anyway, them. guess who appears now? I need to change the music for this. The Emperor of Mankind appears! Yeah, he is. I know this guy! I know this guy! I know him! Animation. We used to yes. go to high school together! No, you didn't, Dato. <laughs> now, well, here's the first so. thing you do. He is the most, at this point, he's the most powerful psyker in existence. Hmm. Like, you do not screw with this man. He unites all of Terra under his rule. He made a deal with uh, Mechanicus, uh, the Mechanicus Cult of Mars. To basically make all their technology. Like, in the current Imperium, the Mechan the Adeptus Mechanicus makes everything. You do not piss them off. Because they could say, well, well, your next shipment of tanks didn't come in. Sorry. And this is... The one thing you have to know about the Emperor, he is gigantic. Like, he's at least, like, ten feet tall. And... It's, it's built. And great hair. And he likes gold. Well, I know something interesting yeah. about that sword he has. That what sword can cause true death upon anything. So it doesn't go back to one of the gods. No, here's the thing. A demon? You can't really kill a demon. When you do, all they do is reappear in the immaterium. But with his sword, you can kill it. Yeah. Yeah. And he started the Great Crusade. Basically, the idea of the Great Crusade is this. 
No, he was at least 20 feet tall. You're right. He's at least 20 feet tall. The Great Crusade is basically the idea of him basically uniting all of humanity under one banner. Basically, you know all those uh, races that, or all those humans that left in the Great Exodus? Yeah, they couldn't get yeah. back because when Slaanesh was born, she kind of fucked with warp travel. So if you went and into the warp, do. when you when you tried to do warp travel, uh, basically a bunch of demons would know where you were because you appeared in the warp. It would just uh, do what they do to you. Hmm. And, he, and, hmm. and he basically activated the idea of the imperial truth. It's basically of, do not believe in gods. We all must focus on the betterment for man. Oh, also one more thing. Very important, guys. I am not a god. That's very important. You should know this. <laughs> don't, don't praise me like a god. Don't do it. Just yeah. don't. I'm, I'm gonna praise him like a god. No one can stop me. Actually, he can. He would backhand the shit out of you for it. He did it to one of his sons. I can take a one v one. Give me ten days <laughs> prep time. And then suddenly we don't know Dale ever existed anymore because guess what? None. Anyway, he actually created the 20 Primarchs, which is basically these 20 super babies using his DNA as a base. We, there is a theory that he literally just started pulling minor gods from the warp and putting them as their souls. Hmm. Yes. We're, uh, we're not sure, but using the, the gene seed of those 20 Primarchs, Hey, Wait, he's finally Chrono? here. Chrono. He's finally here. Oh, God. And they brought him in. God. Okay, do you guys want to give him the rundown? Oh, what is going on here? What the fuck? Oh, uh, yeah. The Kamazar just dragged wanna... him in. Uh, you might want to run it back, but, um... Wait, he's not tied up. <sighs> oh, no, he is. He is. I was about to say, I should be. <laughs> anyway. I'm not even streaming. No, it's fine. This week's up. Basically, oh. here's the thing, Chrono. At the very start, we had t giant toad men who created most races in the world. They went to war with Terminators who hated them because they didn't give them Termin their immortality. Hold up. Hold oh up. my god. We Terminators have to go back. Terminators who hated them. Basically, they Next were originally... Oh, what did I miss? You missed a lot. You missed a lot. God Which... dang it. When did y'all start? <laughs> Not too long. It's been nearly an hour. Okay, so uh, I have to go back a bit for this. I'll try to run through oh, this for God. you. I'll try to give you a crash course. Uh, Everyone ready? Uh, Warhammer yeah, crash course. Okay, at the very start, there were two. Gi there was these two beings that were first created. One was toads. a. Yes, giant toads, the old ones, who went around creating other races and were super psychically powered, which is basically space magic. And gaseous beings that fed off of stars. These are two different beings. They created okay. something called the Webway, which basically allows you to travel through space very easily without having traveled through the warp or the immaterium, which is the realm of thought, dream, and souls. They oh, created okay. space elves. They created the quarks, which would later be known as the orcs. They also okay. created the necrotas, which were basically who lived on a very shitty planet because it, made, it gave them cancer because it was irradiated and basically advanced super fast in their technology just to get the hell off their planet. And they were pissed for being dealt sh such a shitty hand. Then they started the war in heaven because they were on a civil war and they wanted something to unite against and they all hated the old ones. But remember, these are all powerful toad men at this point. So they were losing horribly. Okay. So you remember those gaseous beings? Yeah. They gave, they decided that let's give these guys intelligent and super bodies, you know, these giant, all-powerful, gaseous light beings. Once again, yeah. not the brightest bunch. They said that one of them named the Deceiver tricked them into saying that they would give them immortality, but instead turned them into basically Terminators and ate their souls and skin. Damn. They were very pissed about this. Basically, at one point, they, the Catan and them, which they were known by as the Catan at this point, as Star Gods, the Catan and the Necrons basically started beating the shit out of everyone. Everyone. Okay. The Eldar, the Old Ones, they were being everyone. Because remember, it's the power of the soul, so they're feeding off your soul. Because the, because the Catan now like to eat souls, because they now have the body for it. 
But then they realize, oh no, if we eat all these guys, we're going to run out of tasty souls. So they start trying to eat each other. Oh shit. And then so that's that when... cannibalism. Yeah. So basically the Necrons <laughs> realize that this is their ch time to strike and use a super can to start chewing the shit out of the, the Gatan. Basically ripping them to pieces and making them into shards that they can control. The Necrons know that their time is pretty much over, they're losing the war, so they go into things called Tomb Worlds, where they basically hide on the ground and wait for sediment to cover them. Okay. Sediment. And at the end of the war, the Eldars were the masters of the universe. The Sea of Souls was changed into the realm... Were changed into the realm of chaos, because... Here's the thing, when you're dealing with a realm of souls, dreams, and thought, and a bunch of bad shit happens, of course it's gonna get messed up. Anyway, Earth started to come. We started to colonize planets. Mass yeah, exists from the Earth and, that's and could tear... Like, no, that's the zebra like war. Dave, that's I'm like trying to get through this fast. Like each other. Okay. And they, we were able to terraform planets. There was a dark age of technology. Basically, we, the colonies had many, many problems. We used AI and to try and fight our wars for us. And uh, the Men of Iron turned against us. Human Psyker started to become That's a thing. That's what happens if you use AI to do all your work. God damn it, Daniel, I'm trying. Need to ban it. And Human Psyker started to become a thing. You know, Space Wizards. Space Wizards! So basically, here's the thing. When you're a Psyker and you don't minute. know... I'm tied up right now. I'm doing Warhammer. Kamazar, slap him. <laughs> hey. Anyway. Now, human psychers, here's the thing about human psychers, you have to know, is uh, when they when they don't know what they're doing, they basically attract demons to them from the warp, like like moths to a flame, which causes very much problems. There's also giant warp storms I forgot to talk about earlier, which made faster than light travel almost impossible. Yeah. So basically, yeah, everyone is stuck on their planet, no one can leave, it's all bad shit, and any the only way to stop these psychers was to basically hunt them down like witches and kill them. And now we're back with the space elves again. Remember, they are the masters of the universe. They have the greatest technology. They have the best understanding of psychics and the webway. So how'd the Eldar fuck it up? Uh, they basically started pleasure cults. They became complacent. They basically started oh dear. daring in excess. And due to all this grossness and all this excess created by yeah. the most plentiful race in the world, that gave rise to Chaos God Slanesh. No. No. And Stop. basically, no. basically, when Slanesh was no. born, she immediately ate ninety-nine percent of the Eldar gods, okay, and killed ninety percent of the Eldar. So basically, so that she, since she is technically an Eldar god, she would get all of their souls when they die. Her basically birth okay. had ripped the the only Eldar god to seemingly escape was Kigarak, the Eldar laughing god, who has a cult okay. of jesters around him. Basically, oh, the Eldar, the Eldar Empire is completely gone at this point. There is, and they become. Basically, they're fucked. Yeah, basically, there were some Eldar that escaped and lived on craft worlds, where basically these giant living ships. The others ah. were known as the Dark Eldar, who are just the worst. Because okay. they learned that they could stave off Slanesh's influence and still do the pleasure cult thing, by making other people suffer. Okay. And now we get to the arrival of the Emperor of Mankind. He united all of Terra under him. Using his, He was the most powerful Psyker at the time. He made a deal with the Mechanicus cult of Mars to basically unite everyone under them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then you know, we're finally... Where it says deal, at first I thought it said daedal. I was like, what? <laughs> the fuck? It's me. It's me. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm part of this. Yay. I'm still like half awake. So. Okay, no problem. Basically, so the there. they basically oh. the Mechanicus cult or the Adeptus Mechanicus now makes everything for the Imperium, from ships to tanks for toothbrushes. You don't screw with them. And anyway, we are finally here to the Great Crusade, which was him Yay. basically uniting all of humanity under one banner once again. He would basically go from planet to planet, uniting them. Also, he created the 20 Primarchs using his own DNA, basically 20 super babies. But here's the thing. It may or may not have alluded to that he might have just started ripping 
minor gods out of the warp and started, like, putting them in the bodies of them. How'd you do? And basically, he used the genes, or gene seed, of these toy Primarchs to make 20 Space Marine Legions. These usually range, they usually had, uh, let's say, 100,000 of them for each Legion. But here's what happened. I didn't get to this part. Uh, basically, while he was working on his Super Babies, one night, the Chaos Gods basically scattered them throughout, basically, the galaxy. Now, there is a tale of a woman who apparently got tricked by the Chaos Gods into basically throwing them into the warp to where they were going to land wherever. Which, if that was true, I feel like she should have been murdered. Because you gotta remember, you're throwing 20 babies to you don't know where. Yeah. Think yeah, about that for a second. Like, you have no idea I where mean, they're going to end up. But yeah, they scattered the Primarchs all over the galaxy, so now the Emperor has to also go looking for his children. So, since we've talked about them so much, let's talk about them now. Who are the Chaos Gods? Let's go with the first one and the most, uh, the most easy to deal with one. This is Korn. He is oh, the I god of blood, war, hatred, rage, but also honorable combat and strength. Like, you oh, know that- Oh, you're in college. <sighs> no, Dado. You know that meme, skulls for the skull throne, blood for the blood god. Yeah, yeah that's, that's for him. him. Yeah, like, uh... you can see in that picture, he's sitting on a skull of- th He's sitting on a throne of skulls. Oh, that's oh, yeah. why they called Skull Throne. I thought it was just a figure that's of speech. Sick. No. Yeah, and apparently, I don't know why, but of all the Chaos Gods, he hates Slanesh the most. Basically, in I order... Mean, what fuels him is mindless slaughter and murder. Basically, his worshippers just kill in his name. The thing is, you can worship a Chaos God and basically get boons from him. They usually have a setback. Like this one guy who got a boon from Korn in a moment of weakness so he could overpower his enemy. Now he sometimes has random blackouts and he doesn't know what happens. He just wakes up with blood on his hands. Hmm. Who was the uh, people that had done the whole blood blood god thing? That was the worshippers of Korn. The Kornate Massacres. Cool. Uh, cool. I think I that was that a specific species. Oh no, that would be the Kornate Demons. Uh, okay. Yeah, he has demons dedicated just to him. Okay. Now we're going over to Zeech. He's the god of the chaos god of change, evolution, scheming, lies, sorcery, destiny. He loves to make plans to trick people. There is actually a meme. Oh. There is actually a meme where he says just his plan, but he has so many plans going on that even he's not sure what is going to plan. Which one? He, okay, lo okay. he like, loves yes, to set up people for his uh, for his fall, and plan? most yes, most of his uh, followers are usually sor sorcerers or searchers of basically forbidden knowledge. He loves tricking people into becoming his followers. Like he fucking he gets off on that shit. Anyway, we've dealt with the two basically better chaos gods they're all terrible but the next two are perhaps the worse and the music cue in per works perfectly because hey, zeech might trick you corn might kill you and use your skull for his throne but at least he won't do do what nurgle does and that he is the chaos uh you see that giant cauldron uh, you remember when I told some of you that, uh, well, technically there was one other elven god that survived, or Eldar god that survived? Mm hmm That was Ish. Uh, Ish was pulled from the mouth of Slanesh when she ate the gods and taken by Nurgle, and he basically experiments on her and uses all of his new diseases and tests tests its on her. Oh, Ooh. shit. His worshippers oh. are the grossest motherfuckers in the galaxy. Like, yes. Yes. like they're fine with defecating everywhere. They're fine with being <laughs> gross as hell. They're fine with leaving diseases that literally turn people into zombies. 
while okay, making them still conscious of what's going on. Maze. They are also, yeah. for some reason, the most happy, which makes them even grosser. They're having fun. I See? I They're having, having no, fun. No, they don't. No. Please. No. It's disgusting. They, uh, that yeah. Is disgusting. His, his leader of his demons, Plague Father Kugoth, in one of the video games, Larry, have an attack where he defecates on the enemy, so yeah, no. Like I said, the grossest of... But they're being happy. All the souls are happy. Yes, they're being happy while turning people into conscious zombies, Wyatt. Ugh. Yeah. Quite literally, conscious zombies. What I mean by that is you are still conscious of what's going on, but you can don't control your body. Oh. You can still feel everything and see everything, but you are not in control. Oh, but so yeah. basically, it's kind of like they can't control themselves, but, but yeah. it's still like... Okay. Thinking about it, it makes sense if it's a god of disease and stuff. Yeah. there are only so many ways to get sick. Yeah. Uh, he finds new ways, let's just put it at that and say no more. He has gardens where he harvests new disease and rotting carcasses and... Ugh. There's a disease literally called Nurgle's Rot. Which, kill, if I remember correctly, kills the soul. Yikes. And now we're over to Slanesh, the god of pleasure, pain, excess, and beauty. If you're wondering why I have no pictures of her... I don't, I don't think you need none. to explain anymore. Because it's literally... They're, <laughs> sexual and... Uh, Funny enough... Certain. Oh, shit. She, she, he, it has several names. The Prince of Pleasure, She Who Thirsts. And if you're wondering why I'm using several different pronouns, it's because she has both bits and pieces. Oh, oh shit. Ah. Oh. So huh. they're intersex. Uh, I have no idea. I just call her female because I'm pretty sure that might piss her off. And I hate her. <laughs> Out of all of them. <laughs> Basically, her. Out of all of them, that one's the one I hate the most. Yeah, that, I'll explain later. That one right there. Yeah, don't like them. Basically, Adult. her for some weird reason I don't know why, but one of the boons she gives her followers, like you think, oh, they'd be super sexy. No. It just makes sense. What is it? For some reason, she gives her follower crab followers crab hands. <laughs> I don't know why. Because she thinks it's funny, probably. I think She's that's like, funny. I think that's really funny. And Cause like imagine it's like my you, your grace, I have done everything for you. You shall receive crab hands. <laughs> but Pardon? she really likes crab hands. She likes I, when people use her crab hands. I but yeah, Slanesh is probably one of the grossest ones for me. Cause one of her demons only has the ability to what was the word it, they used when they appear? Cause someone to stew in their own juices. Uh, Why? Nope. Nope. Nada. Yeah, the yeah. demons of Slanesh uh, no are way. creepy. They're also they're also one of the fastest demons. They also make obviously all the innuendos you think of. They probably already said it. <sighs> Let's get over with the chaos. Now you see why I don't like these guys. Look, at least one of the, at least now, one of the, the followers of the gods are actually like. Happy. It's funny enough. Here's the thing. If you, there is a way, basically the end point of becoming a worshipper of a chaos god is something called a demon prince, where you can no longer be killed. You basically become a demon. But, ah. you, any god that you worship under, they now own your ass. You have to do what they say when they want it. No matter what. Mm. Like, I'm not gonna get into it, but one time Nurgle's, uh... Demon Prince said no, and he literally stuck him in a jar. Damn. <laughs> uh, that's fun. That, that is actually kind of funny, though. Uh, but basically, yeah. Unless you're somehow become a, a Demon Prince of Chaos Undivided, which is actually really hard. And there's only, like, one of those in existence. But yeah, let's get over, since we were going to talk about them, the 20 Primarchs and their 20 Legions. Let's go over to the 18 Primarchs and their 18 Legions. Let's go over to the 19 Primarchs and their 18 Legions. 
I'm sure all three of you are very confused right now why I, I did this joke. I think I did just, just, just... Uh, a fucking joke. Uh, come I, on, can you slap me again? Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, basically, let me explain this. There are, in the lore, there are technically 20 legions. The second and the 11th legion technically don't exist. Huh? I will give you the in-lore reason, and then I will give you the actual reason. The in-lore reason is that the Primarch of the 2nd and the 11th were in something called the Ramdan Xenocide, which uh, was said to be the biggest alien threat to the Imperium ever. And it's basically thought that uh, those Primarchs died in this fight, and that their names were removed or stricken from history completely and their statues destroyed and any image of re imagery of them gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <sighs> huh. Uh, Want me to tell you the actual reason? Why? Marketability. Oh, so... So basically, wait, so... they basically went, Oh, you can make your own Primarch now! And make him part of the... And make your own Space Marine Legion! That's basically the reason. That's and make him be traitor or loyalist! But yeah, that's that's the reason. It's It's nice. silly. And the idea of making your own legion is so non-existent because in the modern 40k there are so many different space marine chapters that you can really pick from anyone and find one you like. I'll explain what those are later. Anyway, let's get over okay. to some of these Primarchs. I'm not going to go over all of them because that would be insane. Oh, I almost forgot to bring up one thing. The reason it's 19 now is because the final Primarch of the Alpha Legion, the 20th Primarch, Alpha Alpharius, is actually two Primarchs, Alpharius and Omegon. I'm not what gonna- What is Chad? I'm not gonna go nice. into them, but basically Alpharius and Omegon's whole thing is that they are the espionage group. Basically, everyone in their Legion has modified their face to look like them, and they're only slightly taller than a normal Space Marine. So it's like clone troopers? It's No, they're like the CIA, basically. Okay. Yeah. Because I heard clone faces hmm. and I was like... No, they basically modify their faces to look like them. Anyway, let's get over to some of these Primarchs. I've only done the six because I was almost going to go on and say, Okay, I need to do eight. Then I will have just gone on and on and I will have just had all done. I... No. Let's go over to the first son that the Emperor found, which was Horus Lubrical. He was found on basically a planet of gangsters, I guess I should put it. They were basically warring tribes in a way. He was actually the... F mm. Since he was the first one found, the Emperor basically took him under his wing. And he was actually the first one to get his legion, which were the Lunar Wolves. Late later to be renamed to the Sons of Horus. But yeah, he was the most favored son because he's the one who spent the most time with him. And as time went on and they gathered more of the sons, yeah, he started like, to get a little bit jealous of his like, brothers. Basically, what happened to the first of those two aliens and it's my control, it's not my control. It's, oh, that's from earlier. Uh, don't, okay. don't talk to, don't look at chat for this. That's fine. Like, but yeah, he basically started to get jealous of his brothers a bit because, you know, originally having all of daddy's uh, tension and no longer having that now. Each time he found a new one. He would eventually yeah. lead, be left to lead the uh, the Great Crusade as War Master. And that well, put then. a lot of pressure on him. Basically, the Emperor went with, Okay, you're going to lead the Great Crusade. I need to go back to Terra and finish some of my work. I'm not going to tell you what it is that, yo. Is that. <laughs> is yet, though. You just got to trust me. Just trust. Trust me. Trust me, you're my most favorite son, and you've been with me the longest. Okay, let's move on to Vulcan, one of my favorite. Vulcan is the leader of the Salamanders Legion. He is just the nicest guy. Like, quite literally, there is memes of him just hugging people. Aww, He's also, funny neat. enough, the biggest of the Primarchs. He is the largest Gentle of the lads. Aww, yeah, so basically. Cute. He leads the salamanders. Basically, he taught people... Like, here's the thing. When people become space marines, they sometimes disconnect. Uh, disconnect themselves from their families. 
Spoken didn't like that. He said, stay connected to them. We need that grounding bit. We need to be grounded. There's also this thing where he basically liberated his world from uh, Dark Eldar invaders that would just come and, you know, kidnap some of them. He literally led an assault against them. And this is before he met the Emperor. Back when he was just being raised on his planet. Because each time the Emperor came to him, they were already grown men. But yeah. He can also... He has the strange ability to regenerate from death, even. He, basically, even if you kill him, he'll get back up eventually. Like, there's one point in the story where he literally takes on the feeling of, uh, how should I put this, re-entering atmosphere, and eventually lands and wakes up. But I yeah, mean, there, he, he was a... It's probably just like another day for him. He's like, eh, whatever. He is really a landed. master smith. He dedicated them to, well, the, cylinder, the salamanders on the home of... Damn it, I can't remember its name off the top of my head because it's been a while. But yeah. He can pretty much live through anything you throw at him. And he lo he treats his sons like a family. He is a great man. If there's one Primarch I would want to be under, it's probably him. That or uh, yeah. Rogel Dorn. Or actually, one of my favorites we're going to get to eventually here. I didn't want to go over too many of my favorites, so I kind of mixed up some others in here. So now we're off to Lehman Russ. Hey, yo, the Primarch he, of the Space Wolves. He is literally known as the Emperor's Executioner. A she wolf? What? Yes, he was originally, when he was found, he wasn't found by any humans. He was raised by a giant she wolf and actually had to learn to be human again. Like an actual wolf. Yes. Like, the wolf found him and took care of him. And here's the funny thing. When they was found by humans and they attacked his she-wolf mother, he killed like 10 people before they were able to stop him. As a kid. I mean, that's literally his mom. So. And basically, when they basically brought him to the king, they're like, oh, this is a human. He wouldn't let go of his two wolf brothers. Like, Aww. he says, they're coming with me. Aw, that's a really sweet. But yeah. I feel like Chrono would probably like the Space Wolves the most here. Considering they are off the planet of oh. Fenris. Oh, dope. Nice. But yeah. He is also eventually found by the Emperor. And, uh... Basically, the Emperor shows him what's what by beating him in challenges. And eventually, he gets tired of Russ being an idiot and smacks him with his power claw glove. <laughs> But yeah, he became the king of Fenris. He was originally named Lehman of Rus. Because that was the original place he was from. But yeah. He's a quite an interesting man. Though we don't know where he is now. Oh, oh great. Conrad Kirst. <sighs> the best way to describe Conrad Kirst is uh, Super Murder Batman. <laughs> My guy. Like, basically, his idea is very much the end justifies the means. Like, he lived on a planet of just such a high crime rate. Like, unbelievably high. That he believed in the tactic of fear above all else to get through. Like, here's what he would do. He wouldn't kill the corrupt, like, senator. He would go into their house in the middle of the night, kill their family, hang their bodies, and write a bloody note saying, I will do this again. Jesus. That, yeah. He also is the only Primarch to hate his legion at the very end. What was his legion? Uh, his legion was the Night Lords. Uh, but yeah. Was. Did it change? Uh, I'll explain that in a bit, but... Basically, Conrad cursed. Uh, the reason he hated his legion is, you gotta remember... His main thing keeping his planet in check was the fear of him. So when he had to leave, crime went back up. And the thing is, you need to recruit more people to become space marines. And this was his home planet that he would recruit from. So he was basically taking in criminal children who did not believe in his ideals. You want to be part of my legion? 
who did not believe in his ideals. So they were just, it was basically like, these are the criminals I tried to take care of sort of thing. He also had the ability of, I guess it was called perception. He could kind of see into the future a bit. As you can see, some of them have just crazy abilities. They also grow fucking big. Like, some of them are gigantic. Just, they grow super fast. I, I think, like, as a young lad, Vulcan was already eight feet tall. Oh, he's a big baby. Ah, oh, great. We got Potorabo. Potorabo, lore-wise, is known as a petulant man-child. That is a funny uh, name. Okay. Uh, he grew up on a world of Olympia. Why is, uh, Chrono has a bag over his head? Uh, it's, it's a bag of chips. I have yeah, the popcorn. Yeah, all I smell is chips. But yeah. Just to kidnap not, them just here. Not be able to reach. But basically, he had a cynical view of just about everyone he met. His first thoughts of you would be his last thoughts of you. He would not think anything more of you. He was also always told he was wrong about everything, which gave him this kind of self-centered outlook where he could only think that he was in the right. That he, everyone else was wrong. He was in the right. And this was best shown uh, when he uh, met his legion, the Iron Warriors. Basically, he learned that they had lost a siege, so you know what he did? He's like, no, we won, we won. No, no, no. He did uh, something called decimation. Do any of you have your Roman history ready? Oh, he uh, executed them. He killed them. Sure. Decimation is basically where you take 10%, basically you do a lottery of 10% of your troops. And that 10% that were chosen get beaten to death by the other 90%. Jesus. Jesus. So he basically, he he basically showed this to like... show that's what it means to fail him. He also, even if they did good, he wouldn't praise them. He'd just say, yeah, that's why I expect. His basic idea of is, if we're losing, you're obviously not doing my plan right. And his oh. downfall overall is, he would just throw his marines at any problem. Like, here's the thing is, if you throw enough space marines, the tower will fall, but... You're eventually going to run out of space marines, so, uh, you know how I said that they recruit from their home worlds? Mm -hmm. They started to run out of recruits. You can probably guess why. And this made Porturabo very angry. So much so that he burned his own home world. Mm. Huh? And he only really, re he only really realized how much of a monster he was when he snapped the neck of his uh of his stepsister yikes you so he basically was like oh shit he basically had to me. come to point because that was the only one that really understood him and the only one he really liked we'll explain more later but now we get on to one of the better ones ah oh, great dogs give me one second they want to know about Sangrius as well. You have to, like, yeah, you have to teach them back. They're part of it anyway. as well. Disrespectful. Yeah. Now we get on to one of the better ones. Sanguinius! The Primarch of the Blood Angels and closest Hor mm. and Horus's closest friend of all of his brothers. He's probably one of the, mo the ones most well liked, and he's also the ones that none of them wanted to fuck with. Because he was one of the most powerful. At an early age, you know those giant wings on his back? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, those are a warp mutation from being in the warp a bit. He actually led a rebellion, or basically led a fight against horrible mutants that took over his planet of the moon of Baal. He was actually a very extremely well-spoken individual, even as a kid. He enlightened the masses. But yeah, he's also, one flaw that he had, and his sons also inherited, was something called the Red Thirst. Basically, it's a vampire. He's, he's technically a vampire. He needs to drink blood. Oh. And so do all of his sons. That explains the name a little bit more. 
<laughs> yeah, Sanguinius. But yeah, he actually, funny enough, Corn wanted to turn him and his legion because Sanguinius always had this rage that he had to keep in check within him. He always had this unbound rage, but he always knew that he could do better, and he taught his sons that they could be better than this Red Thirst. He's also one of the only Primarchs to have to kill some of his sons due to the Red Thirst. Mm. Yeah, it's not a happy situation. Killing some yeah. of his own legion. He was... Yeah, he was... Sad. He, he was always extremely sad about that. But yeah, let's move on. Now we move on to the Horus Heresy and what happened there. You might be noticing that a certain name is at the very start of it. Heresy. Horus. Joy. And the Her Horus Heresy and oh. how it happened. Oh, and, 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 oh, yeah, and I guess Horus. Where we left off. So the Emperor basically had gathered all of his sons. Uh, I'm going to have to talk about Lorgar. I don't want to talk about Lorgar, but I'm going to have to. Uh, basically, he had base after he had gathered all of his sons, he's like, Okay, Horus, you are now the War Master. You lead all the uh, armies of the Imperium to go keep, like, gaining more plants and adding them to the Imperium. While I go back and work on my Webway project so that we have our own Webway. So we don't have to trouble through the warp and worry about demons. Then we have to go to Lorgar. <laughs> Lorgar, uh. he grew up on a basically a church planet, and he was a big choir boy. As you can probably tell, that didn't gel well with the Emperor, because as soon as he arrived on the planet, Lorgar immediately fell to his knees and praised him as his one true god. And uh, the Emperor kind of gave him that look of, ew. Even though he said, no, don't. Well, he, Lorgar had never knew about... Remember, he had their plan had just been added back into the Imperium. And then, while Lorgar was having problems dealing with all this, we have to talk about someone in his legion named Erebus. Fuck Erebus. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> Erebus what, what uh, was the main cause of a lot of the... Pro a lot of the... Things that happen in the Horus Heresy. He is a member of the Word Bearers Legion, which is uh, Lorgar's Legion, which were also a bunch of choir boys. He basically, when uh, Lorgar was having trouble dealing with all those things of not worshipping a god, he said, Hey, you should worship the original gods of our planet, which were, guess what, the Chaos Gods. So he slowly but surely corrupted... Lorgar and the rest of the word bearers over several decades with the help of Lorgar's adopted father. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically at one point, um, Lorgar basically orchestrated a huge war that Horus didn't want. Basically, they had met a, a planet of humans that had basically technology that basically equaled them. But they didn't want to kill off aliens. They wanted to live alongside them. And Horus wanted to make peace with them. Erebus annoyed... Uh, well, Horus didn't know about this. But Erebus had basically stolen some stuff from them. Which basically led to a war with them. Which basically led to them being wiped out. Which kind of bummed Horus out a lot. He eventually went back to a planet that had been corrupted by Chaos and secretly got stabbed by someone that he trusted by a dagger that had been corrupted by Nurgle. Now, what exactly happened was Nurgle. Nurgle. this dagger was basically slowly killing him. And Erebus made it so that Horus would end up in his care because basically Abaddon, the first captain of the Sons of Horus, basically went, oh no, my father, I must do something. And Erebus was like, We'll get our apothecaries to help him. Don't worry, we'll take care of him and basically let... Because they were basically really trying to find a way to help him. <sighs> what happened next? Well, 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 well. Basically, through some uh, warp magic that Erebus and several others in the Warbearers had learned to, like, manipulate his memories, 
or manipulate his dreams as he was laying there, he basically saw a future where everyone was bowing to the Emperor of Mankind as a god, and everyone lived horrible lives. Horrible short lives, I should say. And, uh, basically the... The four Chaos Gods made him a deal. You rebel and kill your father. Then you get to free the Imperium and we'll heal your wounds. See, the one thing you have to know about Horus is... As the War Master, he was above his brothers. And had to constantly, like, wrangle them in and whatnot. And you gotta remember, leading all of humanity's armies puts a lot of pressure on a single man. Through all this, and through second-guessing his father, very, uh, second-guessing because he didn't tell him what he was doing, he accepted the deal from the Chaos Gods to rebel against his father, believing that he was freeing the Imperium, not realizing he was causing the future that he saw. And this is how he looks uh -oh. Chaos Corrupted. I mean, he looks kind of cool, at least. He literally said, Let the stars fall. Let the worlds melt. I will see the galaxy free again. Okay, so I have to explain why the Emperor was stuck on Terra. Basically, what happened with another one of his sons, Magnus the Red, he had learned about uh, Horus being turned to chaos, and he had tried to warn the Emperor. But through doing so, he had broken a giant psychic barrier that, uh... Basically, the Emperor had placed in the warp to keep demons away. So, when that broke, demons just started spilling into his palace. Like, you know where he was working on the webway? They just suddenly started coming out of there. So, him and his guards were basically trying to fight them off. And it kind of ruined his webway project with the golden throne that he was making. So, now, he has to stay on there with his own psychic might just to keep it from breaking reality. Okay. You get all that? Uh, yeah. Okay, the Horus Heresy. Over time, Horus would corrupt more and more people under his command. But he couldn't corrupt all of them, is a the thing. And also, other Primarchs were being corrupted. Angron got corrupted. Uh, Fulgrim, the guy I actually kind of like, which is why I hate Slanesh. He got corrupted because he found a sword called the Lair Blade, which caused a demon to possess him. <sighs> It's just, basically, the big guy too. Ba uh, I'll get into this more, but basically he started corrupting and basically turning the Primarchs against each other. Like, there's one point in the history where basically Magnus the Red is a big guy, by, is big on sorcery. And the Emperor told him to stop, and he wouldn't. So he's like, okay, Lehman, go get your brother and bring him to me. Guess what Horace said? He said, oh no, he changed his mind. He wants you to kill him. So guess what Lehman Russ did? Or at least tried to do. Kill. He, he tried to kill his... Well, he he broke his back, that's for sure. Basically, here's the thing. Horace knew he couldn't get rid of all the loyalists in his legions and in other legions. So, he orchestrated the Ispan 3 uh, bombing. Basically, the idea of this was... There was a chaos cult on there. He was going to send all of the loyalists in these corrupted legions. And basically, while they were fighting, he would just drop carpet bomb the entire area. It did not turn out like that. Well then. Because they, some of them learned about this, were able to escape and warn the emperor about what was going on. <laughs> so basically... They were also able to warn their brothers on the planet about what was going on. So he had to spend weeks upon weeks bombing that planet to try and get rid of them all. Which, uh, he eventually fell back to Ispan 5, which we will get into. <sighs> the Dropside Massacre. Rogel Dorn, Primarch of the Imperial Fist, along with seven other, along with seven Space Marine Legions would basically try to put an end to Horus's, well, heresy, <sighs> his rebellion. The problem was, four of these legions and their Primarchs had already been corrupted. 
or have turned to or had already turned traitor. They did not know this until the fighting started. It was a massacre. In this fighting, uh, Ferris Manus had his head chopped off by his favorite brother, his favorite brother, Fulgrim. Like, let me put how close these guys were. They once went into a smith-off against each other. And they were smithing, and they were smithing. And when they looked at each other's weapons when they were done, they both decided that each other was the winner. And then they both laughed a little, because they said it at the exact same time. And then gifted each other the weapon. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, well, first man is, is now missing a head. Uh, now, man. this caused Fulgrim to actually wake up from his possession and be like, oh my god, what have I done? And actually retreat into the blade. Basically, the demon now had full control of his body because he just couldn't deal with what he had done. But yeah, so what happened to some of the other Primarchs? The Raven Guard, the Salamanders, you remember Vulcan? Yeah. Most of his sons died trying to protect the other legions. Vulcan was captured. Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard was actually able to escape. And Rogel Dorn had to retreat to Terra. Now, this is an unbelievable victory for Horus. He realizes he has to press the advantage on this. He cannot allow them to regroup. No, I will tell you, do you want to know what happens with Vulcan? It's actually pretty interesting. What? What happens with the big man? Uh, basically, what happens with Vulcan is this. He, uh, remember uh, Conrad Kirst? The guy all about fear? He kept trying yeah. to break Vulcan. You know, he would rip out his spine. He would cut him to pieces. But no matter what, Vulcan would just deal with it. He would kill his own sons in front of him. And his resolve would still not break. Until he forced him into a deadly maze, wearing nothing but a loincloth, and told him, Hey, in this maze is your favorite hammer. And with it, a teleporter that can teleport you out of here. So he went through this deadly maze, dying several times, until he found the hammer. And then, you know who appears. Corvus Corax appears right in front of him, laughing at him, saying, Well, too bad. There is an anti-teleportation field around this entire maze. Vulcan then proceeds to beat the shit out of him with the hammer as he reminds him that it is still a weapon. Uh, uh, uh. And then he, uh, I think if I, I don't remember correctly, but I think he actually throws Conrad Curse into the anti-teleportation field to deactivate it. And then he actually does, he is actually able to teleport out of there over in the atmosphere of the home of the ultramarines okay now i will give you over to the siege of terra this is where horus finally reaches terra he believes that the reason the emperor is sitting on the golden throne is that that's how he's gonna ascend to godhood somehow he leads okay. all of his forces and attack on the eternity gates which is the one step away from where the emperor is who is just trying to hold on and basically keep everything from basically destroying Terra. The one thing standing in his way is, well, there's actually several Primarchs. There's Jagatai Khan of the White Scars, there's Rogel Dorn of the Imperial Fist, but most importantly, there's Sanguinius and his Blood Angels. Sanguinius is the number one guy in front of the Eternity Gates. He is cutting down demon after demon taking wound upon wound until he fights a greater demon that once beat him and he cuts him down. Now, Horus is pissed about this, so he sends in Angron, who had become a demon prince at this point, and he is his biggest ace in the hole. Now, in order to defeat Angron, Sanguinius does this. He takes a blade right to the gut and grabs what are called the Butcher's Nails, which are these things that are stuck in Angron's brain. He rips them out. Oh, Jesus. And for a moment, Angron has clarity because that was causing him to go crazy. And then he feels absolute agony and disappears into the warp. Anyway, oh. as, as this goes on, Horace realizes he can't get them to... He can't get to the Eternity Gate. He cannot get through the Palace of Terra. To the Imperial Palace. So... 
what does he do? He basically deactivates his shields and basically says, tells them to all come onto his ship for one final battle. The Emperor is one of those people who goes on that ship. But, in order for him to leave the Golden Throne, his best friend, Malkador the Sigilite, who is the strongest psyker second to him, basically says, you go, I will hold off the throne as best as I can. And this man is struggling to hold it together as he's sitting on there. So basically, the Emperor teleports him and his sons. They end up in different spots. And the first one to run into Horus is Sanguinius. Now, Sanguinius is already badly injured. And it's believed that he saw a vision of the future of what would happen if he went on there and still did. Horus eventually kills his favorite brother, Sanguinius. Because you gotta remember, Sanguinius might have been the strongest, but he is also horribly injured. Then the Emperor is the next one to appear. And the two start battling. He is mortally wounded. Basically, at first he doesn't want to hurt Horus because you gotta remember, this is his the first son he's found. This is his baby boy. But Horus does not care and mortally wounds his father. So the Emperor murders the shit out of him for all he did. He uses his psychic might to obliterate his soul. Basically, that means he can never, ever, ever come back. This is, this is so powerful that it even kills the very clone of him. Jeez, the clone? Fuck. Yeah. So Horus is dead as shit. Now, I will say one thing that actually is bad for Sanguinius dying is his psychic shriek of pain unleashed what is known as the Black Rage upon uh, the Blood Angels. Now, what that does for the Blood Angels is basically this. If they go into a rage, they will go back and see themselves as Sanguinius as he's fighting Horus. But they're still moving and attacking in real time in a real place. Well, who looks like Horus? Everyone but your battle brothers. So basically, they go on a fucking blood rage attacking everyone that looks like Horus. Which is everyone except for your brothers. Everyone except for all the other... The other blood angels. Okay, Horus dies. So the is the first to find him. Yeah, I've already said all this. Destroys him, and the Chaos Forces... They fucking beeline it. Because they realize they've lost. They realize we need to leave now. The Sons of Horus run the fuck away. <laughs> and so does everyone else. Because this was their one big shot and they lost it. You had one shot. Would you take it? The Aftermath. This is actually quite important. That is Rogel Dorn of the Imperial Fist. And this is G Roboto Gilliman of the, um, of the Ultramarines. Each of the Primarchs. What happens next? Uh, basically, since the Emperor is mortally wounded, he's now trapped upon the uh, Imperial Throne. Or the Golden Throne. Basically, it's used now as a life support to keep him alive. At the cost of like, a thousand psychers a day. The thing is, you kind of need him around in order for warp travel to work. Because it uses his psychic might to basically navigate you around there. Uh, Malkior the Sigilite, now called Malkior the Hero, dies. Like, he is actually turning to dust from having to hold all this psychic power. And he dies. Now, the surviving Primarchs and Lotus go on the Great Scorn, which basically means they go around hunting all the traitors they can find and murdering the shit out of them. Any yeah, they can enough. find. That's what the Imperial Fists do, that's what all of them do, that's what the Blood Angels do, especially. Gilliman then writes what is known, in Acts, what is known as the Second Founding. He writes something called... <sighs> the Codex Astartes. Basically, it's his way of trying to stop something like this from ever happening again. He says that all Space Marine Legions have to be broken up into ten chapters of only a thousand. 
not not all the remaining Primarchs agreed with this, but you got to realize they just went through what is basically a civil war. They did not want to have to go through another one. So a lot of them reluctantly agreed to this, to basically split up their sons into... Basically, all these chapters would be named something different. Only one would get to keep the original heraldry, the name, you know, that stuff. But funny enough, want to know something cool about the Imperial Fist? What? There's been a lot of foundings, but one rule of the Imperial Fist that every successor chapter has to do is called the Last Wall Protocol. Basically, if shit gets rough, they are basically allowed to say, we're calling, the Imperial Fists are allowed to say, we're calling in the Last Wall Protocol. Everyone get back in, we're all forming into the Imperial Fists again. Basically, if shit goes heavy and hard, they all go back together into being one legion. Which is kind of cool. But yeah, through yeah, this aftermath, cool. the Mount Killer was forming something called the Inquisition, as I was talking about. Which is basically an anti-everything group. They had an order for dealing with Xenos, order for dealing with demons, that sort of thing. And the group of space marines that are used to deal with demons are the Great Knights down there. Oh, I've gone through a lot of this. The present day Imperium. As I said, in the twenty-six, in the forty-second millennia, there is to only be fair, war. This is a lot to take in. And you're, yeah, I mean, you're, you're trying your best. I am, I am, I am. Gilliman was actually injured by Volgrim during the Great Scorn, I believe. But he has now healed. He was originally put in stasis for a very long time by his sons, but he's now awoken in the current day Imperium. He is not a happy camper. Because you gotta remember, now, uh, thanks to Lord, someone finding Lorgar's book, they all, they now all worship the Emperor as a god. So he's basically considered a demigod. Uh, he is not a happy camper knowing that he's dealing with all this. And he is right now leading the Imperium through a tough time. Most of the Primarchs are either dead, turned into demon princes, or missing. Uh, I think Corvus Korax, the leader of the Raven Guard, is, uh... Yeah, the one joke about calling, uh... Uh, Gilliman's group, he, he's sometimes called Robot Gorilla Man. There's also, his group is called the Ultra Smurfs, because, as you can see, they all wear blue. Like, they're mostly blue. They're also not well-liked. Mostly because there was this one writer who just included them in everything and always had them win, basically. <laughs> That is, that is yes, they, they, he's been cast off into the like the warp or whatever, and their reputation is starting to recover. But yeah, there's so many different chapters of Space Marine now. Like I said, there is like 26 foundings now. Not counting the Primaris founding, which is a whole nother thing. But yeah, most of the Imperium <laughs> prays to the Emperor as a god, and most of their lives are short and horrible. Mm. But yeah. And now I get to talk about Abaddon the Loser. His real name, or his real title is Abaddon the Despoiler, but I'm not going to call him that. <laughs> the Loser sounds funnier. There is a reason for that. See, he basically took control of what was the remnants of the Son of Horus and basically turned them into the Black Legion. <laughs> now you're probably wondering what does so the I, Black Legion what? do? Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, they gather up as many people that hate the Imperium mm -hmm. as they can. Well, I... Basically, it, he doesn't care if you oh, dislike oh, I... him. He only cares so if you I hate the Imperium. Him. This is a group entirely made. They gathered the worst of the worst kinds of people to his side. And every once in a while, he'll lead a Black Crusade. Now you're probably wondering, what is a Black Crusade? A Black Crusade is basically when he makes a run at Holy Terra. He basically, the idea is going in a straight line from the edge of the galaxy, taking over planet and planet and planet, making a beeline for Terra as he takes over each planet. Sorry, I had to, sorry, I forgot to mute. That's fine. Now, do you understand what that means, right? Going from planet to planet, like taking them down and then going to the next one? Like domination, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much chaos corrupting everything or murdering everyone there and then moving on. 
Now, here's the funny thing. I'm going to move in real close to my mic for this. It, it took him 13 Black Crusades to get through the first planet. <laughs> now you see why I call him Abaddon the Loser. Yeah. Yeah, he sucks. I wow, can, he's I can absolutely make fun Such of someone for that. Like, the first spend. planet on the way was Cadia. And he only won during... He only got through this planet by throwing a giant ship at it and cracking the planet. The f it took up 13 tries, my guy. The funny thing is... That didn't even break the resolve of the guardsmen on that planet. Because now they get the war cry of... The planet broke before the people did. And also that Cadia still stands because the Cadians are still around. And they're still fighting. But you gotta admit, that's a hell of a war cry. <laughs> that the planet Lily, broke Lily before you did. Lily, Lily imagine, imagine it takes like 13 tries. And on this last one, they're like, nah. They're like, nah, you didn't win because the planet broke before we ever did. Which is a fucking humdinger to say. I don't know why I just said there, but either way. On to the next part. Said, oh, dinger. I would be remiss... If I didn't mention the poster boys, the space marines, you've all seen them one way or another. You all know of them, at least a little bit. These guys are everywhere you look for Warhammer stuff. They are also known as the Adeptus Custodes, or obviously space marines. They are the Imperium's greatest defense against all evils. They originally start as like normal human beings, and then they take injections of gene seed, which is basically like... Primark genes being injected into all over your body. It's a kind of... Hence why they... Yeah. Hence why they look so big. Yeah. Okay. They also live, like, extremely long. Like, there's one... Uh... There's one that lived, like, for almost till modern day. Who was... Uh, who was originally part of one of the legions. I... I can't speak today. Anyway... Mm -hmm. Basically, okay. it's a slow, somewhat... It's a somewhat slow process, but eventually they get their armor, which is ceramite armor. It's like a mix of metal and ceramics. But yeah, it's power armor, so they can move very quickly. They're strong, fast. It's basically like... Think of a fast-moving tank. That can take a tank shell just easily and keep on shooting. Because that bolter is firing explosive rounds. But yeah. Now we go over to the other races. You remember the Dark Eldar. Yeah, the best way to describe their home their home now in the webway called Kamara is it was called in one series I knew of if the entire galaxy is a run down town, Kamara is the run down strip club turned insane asylum. Jesus. What? Yeah. So they mostly find, kidnap, and torture other alien races. You know, to, so that they can do whatever they want. But yeah, they found out that this could stave off Slanesh feeding off their souls, so they do it all the time. They also just like doing it, honestly. Yeah, <sighs> no, I'm a, it's cool. Not. Yeah. Then we get to the Tau Empire. The Tau are... They are cool. They're the newest race, I will say that. They are not well liked. At all. And weak than humans and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Funny enough, the Eldar referred to humans as Monkai. You can already tell what that means. They, they call yeah. me they call it a monkey. Yeah, because if to them like, to oh. us, because to us to them. They believe us as unevolved apes to them, considering how old they are. But here's the funny thing that people also don't like Eldar. Let me give you the reason. Okay, we're gonna go we're gonna run through a scenario, Chrono, you and me, okay? You are going to be a human soldier. Okay. I'm going to be the Eldar. I'm gonna say I know of a great disaster that's going to befall you if you enter that cave. I'm not gonna tell you that. All I'm gonna say is do not enter that cave. You just gotta trust me. Now, what would you say if I said that? I, I... Huh. 
You'd say why, I right? Just met, I, I, yeah, I'd be like, I've just met you. No, you, you can't possibly know. comprehend the possible ways I am thinking. You must simply trust that I know what is best for you. God, they're stupid on their own accord then. Jesus Christ. Yes, it's just basically me talking over you saying of how smart I am, how compared to you, and you should just listen to what I'm saying without actually telling you why. Superiority complex. Good to know that's Wait, what is have. that what the Eldar would do to trick people? No, they wouldn't do it to trick people. That's how they do it to talk to normal humans whenever they see oh something God. in the future. Oh, you mean the Tau or the... No, just humans. Okay. Now we're dealing with the Tau. The Tau are weird. They uh, they originally had a caste system where they had several different casts of fire, water, earth, and wind. Each one slightly different. And then came the, the ethereals that basically used some sort of pheromone to basically tell the others, yeah, we should be in charge. They also somehow advanced their technology rapidly fast. Like only in a few thousand years, they already have laser guns that are surpassing the Imperium in some ways. But yeah, they are blue alien guys that's hiding their armor. They use mechs a lot. Apparently on the tabletop, they are horrible to fight. No one likes to play against them. Because, here's the thing, they don't have any psychers. They are horrible in melee. Like, it is comical how bad they are in melee. So, what do they do on the tabletop? They just shoot their guns. From really far away. That's all they do. That's all you do on your turn, is you fire every gun you have and then end turn. Yay. So it sounds boring to play. Sounds... Yeah, but they have their own empire. They're actually one of the nicer factions. They are willing to make trade agreements with other races and slowly integrate them into the Tau Empire. They won't I mean, force it. That their dice is a bit of a, uh... It's a bit weird in a grim dark setting, but uh, they do also have some problems, such as sterilization of other races. Anyway, they do the do that to races under them. But yeah, everyone is doing this for what they believe is the greater good, which is just whatever the the ethereals say. That is, there is actually one Tau group that is undeniably good which is the farsight enclave which is basically a general farsight that learned what the imperial what the ethereals were doing and broke off he now has his own little enclave due to him being able to break free in a battle he has his own this own warp powered sword that every time he kills something it gives their years of life to him but yeah these guys aren't as important as you would think Whenever they battle the Imperium, it's kind of hilarious because they are so naive and thinking they won't come near us near our big laser guns. Deal with the frothing berserkers. <laughs> yeah. Now we get to the Mimi Boys. The orcs. the orcs. I will give you a rendition of what orcs sounds like in one moment. They speak with a proper British accent. <clears throat> Oi! You get? I be the biggest and meanest and greenest boy there is. Wah! You gonna get some or you gonna get cropped? Cause I be one damn thundercracker. <laughs> now you better listen. We gonna get those humies, and we gonna get them good. Got you get? I, I uh, man. They're, uh, yeah. They're basically sentient mushrooms. Every time an orc dies, they basically leave spores behind that make more orcs. The funny that thing is, is... very interesting. Yeah. The funny thing about them is their stuff just works because they have a powerful <laughs> psychic influence. Like, as I said before, <laughs> the reason they paint yep. their cars well, red... It makes the, my, because they believe their stuff my, goes faster. I will tell you some funny stories, a funny story about orcs that I have no idea if it's real or not. Basically, there were these guardsmen shooting at orcs and they run out of ammo. So one of the guardsmen goes up, shakes his gun and says, bang, and then an orc falls over. So the others just start saying, bang, 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 and the orcs just start falling over because they believed they were getting shot and dying. 
It, wait, that reminds me of this, like, story. But in, yeah. Like, World War I. But yeah, they be the reason they went... I have no idea if this story is true or not, but the fact that it is even a possibility tells you how silly the orcs are. Silly billies. But yeah. They have two gods. Gork and Mork. Brutally cunning and cunningly brutal. But yeah, they also... Uh, basically, they're... Their tech just works. If they believe it does, that it works. There's also an orc war boss, I'll tell you a knife fire story, who went back in time to kill his younger self just so he could have two of his favorite guns. <laughs> They're silly guys. There's also the red... I love them, I love them. There's also the red gobbo who is fighting for uh, goblin rights in orc society. And yeah, they, it's not working out good for him. I'm not sure. I haven't checked on him a bit. But funny enough, one of the funniest things is how they name stuff. Like, normal orcs are called Da Boys. Specialized orcs are called Da Boy. Da Odd Boys. Da Boys. Da Boys. <laughs> and da boys. The, I, I love that. <laughs> and the Psyker, the Psykers, the, sp boys. the Space Wizards are called Da Weird Boys. Da Weird da Boys. Boy. And then there's the Jamaica bo the the weird boys. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> weird boys can't be near other orcs for too long. If they get a little too hype with their psychic energy, though, the weird boy could uh, explode. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, the leader of a group of orcs is usually the biggest and meanest and greenest, usually through constant combat. The funny thing about orcs is, let's say an orc loses an arm. He can literally just pick up an excavator arm and put it on. There, he's got a new arm. And it somehow works. Because he believes that it works. <laughs> Orcs are incredibly silly. They are the memeiest group in all of 40k. They are fun to play around with, I will say. They, they also have something called squigs. Well, basically think of a meatball with, like, rap, uh, rap, raptor legs and, uh, like, a big open mouth, like, teeth. Just full of teeth. What? Yeah, that's a squig. But yeah. <laughs> These guys are the funniest guys. So if there's any time you just want to put silliness in anything that you're playing with 40k, just add the orcs. They uh, they just like to fight. They like to fight mm. a lot. They are <laughs> goofy little fuckers. Everyone loves orcs because... You can't really take them seriously, but they're still very grimdark in what they do, but they're still funny. It's like, they just, it's like, they just want to fight, that's all. They don't care about torture. One funny thing is, about, like... you know warp travel where, basically, humans have found a way to activate something called a Geller field to basically hide them from demons and whatnot in the warp? You know what orcs do? They set what? off, when they enter the warp, they set off the loudest horns, because they want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Honestly, if you ever want to see something fun, just look at the models for orcs and see how silly they get. Because orcs can get really big, but they can be really silly. There is also Demeca boys, which also make their mechs, their cars, and whatnot. <sighs> orcs are just goofy fucks. I love them. They're great. Also, their All major about. military complaints are called a great wah. A wah. wah. Also, the energy they a use wah. is called wah energy. Oh. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. A wah is basically a huge campaign of orcs going to fight stuff. Wah. <laughs> I can't. A wah. <laughs> I can't it's get fun. over that. Wah. Actually, they're, really... they're very simple boys. Yes. I want, yes, they are. Now, I want to go over some of my favorite chapters in the 4K universe. One of my favorite ones, the Lamenters, whose war cry <laughs> is, for those we cherish, we die in glory. They are descended from the Blood Angels. They are part of the 21st founding, the Cursed founding, which, uh, they've gone through some shit. Originally, basically, at some end point before the Primaris founding, there was only, like, 40 left. 
You know how they usually start with a thousand? Yeah. Uh, basically, they are... They love the Imperium. They try their best to protect the people of the Imperium. But they get knocked down so much. Like, they are honestly more altruistic than even the Salamanders. Because they just go so hard to protect these people. Even though they hate them. Even though they are hated. Which, that kind of altruism I just gotta love. Mm -hmm. Basically, what happened with them is... Uh, they were originally supposed to stop a chaos invasion with another chapter called... <laughs> I think it was the Morontators. Basically, since they were cursed, the Morontators just left them there to fend for themselves against the Chaos Invasion. And they held off. They were losing so many people. They had to hold off until the White Scars and Ultramarines arrived to support them. There's also the time they were just trapped in the warp for a long period of time. Having to fight off demons constantly. If you want, after the end of the stream, I will show you a video of all the things that have happened to them. But yeah, they are the most unlucky boys. They were involved in something called the Bad At uh, Wars. Where basically, they were trying to support a friendly chapter that was nice to them called the Astral Claws. Who were kind of rebelling against the Imperium for mistreatment by their governors of their homeworld. Who were trying to make them pay out the nose just to do everything. Even though the job of a space marine is to protect your planet. So yeah, they uh, they got crushed in that and were they were forgiven quotation marks and forced Quotations. to go and forced to go on a 100-year penance crusade <laughs> where they got torn to pieces by the Tyranids. Wait, did I mention the Tyranids yet? I thought I went through them. Oh, that I skipped one. <laughs> God damn it, it made me skip one. Okay. Let's go oh, over These are, cool. these are oh, the dude, Tyranids. All the fun people. The Tyranids do not come from our universe, funny, or come from our galaxy, funny enough. They appeared on one of the spiral arms, if I remember correctly. These guys, they go from planet to planet, basically eating everything and evolving, using, stealing genes from other alien races. That's cool. Wait, what if they got their hands on the, um, what was it? I, I'm surprised oh, I forgot his name. Oh, the gene seed, or the one of a Primarch? Yeah. Oh. That's very simple. Exterminatus, the whole planet. <laughs> Basically glassed the whole planet. Funny enough, the first time they ran into him, they glassed like five planets and it still didn't stop them. Oh my god. They are a devouring hive mind horde where they will sometimes... See, sometimes we have to deal with gene stealer cults, which basically means they implant their seed into the ground and basically the people that eat the food from there start to like gain a connection to the hive mind and uh yeah it's really bad these guys just eat everything everything in their wake and they have hive fleets basically what that means is when they're done eating everything on a planet they basically congeal together eating themselves and forming a massive fleshy ship it is horrifying yeah Funny enough, in the newest Space Marine game, we will be fighting the Tyranids. But yeah. Oh yeah, I saw. I can't wait. Oh my god, it's gonna come out in September as well. It's gonna be interesting to see. But yeah, these guys, they kind of scare me. They are a horrifying... Funny, fun fact, there is someone that uh, orchestrated a fight between them and orcs to see who would win or what would happen. Hopefully that they would weak each other. It, it didn't happen. They, uh, they, um, uh, they've been making each other stronger. They cancel each mm. other out. <laughs> they've been, it, it, it's like the immortal, it's like the immovable object meets the unstoppable force. They just keep hitting against each other. I don't know if it's ended yet. That is actually funny. It's, yeah, yeah, the Tyranids are horrifying because they just eat everything in their path. They, we don't know where they come from. All we know is they didn't come from our galaxy. And that at one point, I... another high fleet appeared on the other end of the galaxy, which is also horrifying. I personally think they're pretty cool because of that. The fact that they are evolving monsters like that. But yeah, they evolve as they attack. Funny enough, the Ultramarines actually got in a fight with them, and they got fucking trounced. 
Like, the chapter master had to be carried away because he had lost most of his limbs. Oh, yeah, they also have psychers, which is, ugh. Now, they I know have their you, own version of psychers? Uh, yes, they also have psychers within their ranks, which makes it even harder to deal with them. Oh, that shit. Remember, gene stealing. Fun. Sounds fun. Yes. yes. Of course, the I... spider likes them. Yeah, of course. <laughs> They're cool. Funny enough, you can play them on the tabletop, but for everyone here, I recommend you don't play the tabletop because we are all poor. Actually, you can't play the tabletop on, like, uh, games like Tabletop Simulator. Or you can play, I like will just odd. say, we'll move on to the next thing real quick after we went through. And now we go over to my other favorite chapter, the Kakaradons, also known as Shark the Space Sharks. They don't have a war cry. They are completely silent and attack from nowhere with super fast speed. They just come out of fucking nowhere and tear you apart. They are believed to be a successor of the Raven Guard, but some believe that they are actually a fusion of Raven Guard and Night Lord Gene Seed. Their chapter master, Tybros the Red Wake, who is right here is the biggest space marine ever recorded. He is not wearing normal space marine armor. He is wearing modified Terminator armor, which is even bigger armor that is put around a space marine's armor. He is a mammoth of a man who scares so the he... fuck out of everyone because he is silent and sneaky. He's a big boy. He wears lightning gauntlets with power fists with chainsaws underneath his palms. The funniest, the funniest thing about him is at one point he scared the shit out of a, uh, a mechanicus who was doing inventory in their armory because he thought he was just a giant Terminator statue. And then he moves and scared the fuck out of him. Because here's the thing. This man doesn't move slow. He moves faster than any, he has any right to. He moves super explosively fast, and that is horrifying because your brain goes that something that big should not move that fast. I honestly, man, there's some. You're getting to the really cool stuff, and I'm I'm really here for it because that's that's just sick. Tybros tears through people. He tears through them. Anyway, for video games, I actually do have some recommendations for you guys. There is Warhammer Space Marine, which uh, goes with you playing as one of the Ultramarines against orcs. <laughs> Quite fun. There is Warhammer Bolt Gun, which is basically like a Doom game. There's Warhammer Dark Tide, where you play as normal guardsmen, and one of the mutant races in Ogrim, which is basically, think of a big ogre guy that looks humanish. There's also Ratlings, which are... Basically, think of, like, gnomes. That's the best way to describe them. There is Warhammer Dawn of War. Which, if you want to play the Tyranids, that is your best go-to. Which is, it's an RTS game. And there is... Fun fact! Anyone never play StarCraft? Uh, no. Did you know no, that originally no. started as a Warhammer game? Oh... No idea. Yeah. That's cool. There is also the Warhammer Fantasy game, but we're focusing on this. Anyway, other videos that I think you guys should watch. The one inspiration I have to say about this is Mr. Bones up here. I watched him late at night after working on the night shift. There's also, if you want nice information just about cool shit, then I recommend him or the Remembrancer <laughs> over here if you want specific knowledge about specific people. If you want a comedy series, go to Breva Alpha Busa, because he has an entire series called If the Emperor Had Text the Speech Device, where it explains a lot more lore, but it also makes fun of some of the sillier shit. Like, it eventually spins off into its own series, own alternate universe, where unfortunately he can't continue due to lawyers getting in the way. Uh. Now, I want to explain what this is. Can any of you guess what this is? Wait, wait. What is it? Look at the creature. That is a feline. That is a mutant human. Oh. In 40k. 
so that's why. Okay. I have no idea who the audience is, but goddamn. So if you want to play as them, I bet you can in one of the TTRPGs. Anyway, I just want to thank all of you for coming to this and helping me throughout this. So thank you all so much for coming to this. It's, this has been yeah. such hard work. And praise be to yeah. the Emperor. Yeah. yeah. Good work on praise you, Mac. Jesus Christ. Emperor. I'm surprised. Like, you put a lot of effort into this and it was super good. Ooh. I actually had a lot of fun just listening in and taking this all in. I'm honestly... So, I'm, I'm surprised Warhammer. that we didn't talk about, like, some well, of the artifacts. It's like the Mechanicus, the uh, Cadian. If, if this video goes well enough over on YouTube, I just might. I will go into the Mechanicus because I like talking about the Mechanicus. I like talking about the Inquisition. I like talking about... All of the sillier factions, too. We can go into some of the campaigns by orcs if you guys like it well enough. So, I will say this. Over on YouTube, if you guys like this well enough, please leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, e. and tell us what you want us to focus on if you want me to make another e. video like this. Because then I can spend my sleepless nights due to my insomnia at least being productive. Yeah, and thank you all for watching. I guess that's the end of the stream. It is. Thank you all so much. I'll right, see you guys you. later. I am sweating right now because my room is the <laughs> hottest thing here. <laughs> and thank Ice you all. Season. We will raid someone Ice at the end of this. Oh, I don't know who. Yeah, that was the Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did just see the bit where Santa Claus built Megatron and killed the Skylanders. That was a really good part in the lore. And who also with Austin Tribe, What? I I don't huh? know. Don't ask. No, oh, because Brett was here. No, because Brett. Yeah, I know. And is that all? Oh, yeah, there's a war. What the hell? I did. But yeah, you guys can out. tell I mean, how much work it. I put into this. So thank you for the head pets. Yeah. I I eventually yeah. if if this video does well enough, I will say this. I will gladly play Dawn of War for them or Warhammer Space Marine, because I like oh, going into it. And I. And if you guys want to play some of the games, hell, I'll try and get you some of them on a sale. Anyway, thank you so much. We'll be raiding beautiful Beck, and we'll see you all later. I am sweating. All right, I'm gonna. All right, I'm actually gonna turn off my stream, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.